What's up guys, Matt here at MS Performance. Uh, doing a video on how to calculate uh, the correct valve clearance for your engine. Uh, if it's a stock engine or if it's a highly tuned uh, engine, if it's got solid lifters, you need to calculate uh, and measure, more importantly, measure your valve clearances and then calculate uh, the new clearance that you need. So we'll start from the beginning. It's, it's, the information here is, is very overwhelming. So bear with me because uh, it, is, it is quite interesting. Uh, so here we have our standard uh, cam followers here. We've got exhaust number one through to exhaust number eight because obviously this is a 16 valve engine. So you've got eight individual exhaust buckets and then you've got eight individual inlet buckets. So what we then do is we then measure the thicknesses of the buckets. Uh, the end numbers, don't worry about that, that's just, uh, I think it's a Ford part number, uh, or how they categorize their followers. So we're not really interested in that. This is what we're interested in. So we'll give you an example here. So inlet, inlet number one, which is this one here, 3.35 millimeters, okay? So we'll come back to that in a second. We'll go on to checking the valve clearances. I think we should probably start with that first. Uh, we know that our standard feeler gauge will go in at 0 0.18. 0 0.19 obviously doesn't go in, so you go back a step and then it's 0.18 is your clearance. Now we then check our normal sizes. So 0.25 is what we're aiming for, uh, but the bare minimum is 0.22. So we know that that's too tight, that's too tight, acceptable, 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 acceptable. But we're aiming for 0.25 because it's there, it's a goal, it's, it's a goal. We want to aim for that middle. We're not really interested in that. So I'll show you a, a quick demonstration of how we will figure out what to do in this circumstances. Um, this is when the, the, the tolerances are too tight. Um, if they're too big, then obviously you go the other way. So we'll just go through what we have here. So inlet number one, and our nominal is 0 0.25, so 0 0.25, subtract 0 0.18 equals 007. Now we've got that written down here already. So we go to inlet one bucket, 3.35 minus, because again, it's too big. Uh, sorry, uh, the tolerance uh, is too tight. I shouldn't have said too big. I don't want to confuse them. It's too tight, so or too small. So subtract zero point zero seven equals three point two eight, which is down here three point two eight. So these are the clearances that we need to have to get our camshafts back to nominal size. So once we've done that, we then make the entire list: inlets through one to eight, exhaust one to eight. And we will look at what we've got currently fitted to the engine. And then we will allocate, as you can see here, this is the finished clearances that we need. These are the current clearances that we have. So to save money, we will look over here and see what our current clearances are. These are the sizes of the buckets, not clearances. So don't get confused with that. So for example, inlet one is 3.35, which is what we need for exhaust number eight. So we will allocate inlet number one, because I've already identified these cam followers on the engine, and I will move that from inlet one position through to exhaust eight number position. So that's a brief a brief video on how to, to do this. Uh, another example, uh, again, okay, so we have, I'll scribble down because I don't need that now, exhaust number one. Now we know the nominal for exhaust is 0.30. So 0 0.30 subtract our valve clearance. This is with the feeler gauge as well. So 0 0.23 is 0 0.07. So we then look at exhaust number one is 3.94. So we have 3.94 subtract 0 0.07 equals 3.87. So that is the clearance that we need to bring exhaust number one back into tolerance. So if we look at exhaust number one, 387 is what I've got there. 387 is on the calculator. And we just look through the list and see if we've got that relative, if we've got that bucket in that size. If we don't, then we need to order it. So 
out of 16 uh, cam followers, we need to order 11. Now, they're relatively inexpensive. They're about five to six pounds each. You get them secondhand, as long as they're in good condition, that you know the, the, the crowns of the follower isn't grouged, uh, and they're actually, you know, the, per size at the spec to, they're perfectly acceptable to use again. Uh, in fact, I think some Honda dealerships uh, for the motorbikes, you can actually, uh, you buy the little, uh, what the hell are they call me in the I think it's a collet or something like that's inside them. There are different thicknesses and you they're exchangeable. You basically take the cam follower out, you pull the collet out of it, which has got your measured thickness, and you exchange that for one that's the correct size. And there's usually I think it used to be free from the Honda dealerships, but again that's that's with motorbikes. So we've got eleven out of sixteen. Um so yeah, it's so we've got five there that we're able to use again. Uh, from the current cam followers. So we'll speak to our, uh, our mates at uh, Dan SD Engineering uh, and because they do Duratex day in, day out, 2.2, uh, sorry, the 2.0, the 2.3 and the 2.5s. So they've used to have quite a few of these knocking about. So yeah, 11 of those to order. And then that will bring everything back into hopefully bang on the money of 0.25 for the inlet and 0.30 for the exhaust. I know it's complicated, but you can play the video back to your heart's content. Uh, but if you've got any questions, uh, feel free to give us a shout. Okay, guys, cheers.